And for more on these ongoing land rights protests, we're now joined by Joseph Norton. He is the Grand Chief of the Mohawk Council of Ganawake, a territory just south of Montreal. He was in Ottawa yesterday taking part in a news conference with other Indigenous leaders calling for the government to find a mutually beneficial solution to the rail blockades. Grand Chief Norton, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, so, sir, I want to begin here uh, with some of the words that we heard in the House of Commons yesterday. The uh, Prime Minister saying that this was the time for patience. Uh, the NDP leader saying he was inspired by the protests. But also this comment from the Conservative leader, Andrew Scheer. Take a listen. Mr. Speaker, that was the weakest response to a national crisis in Canadian history. <laughs> The Prime Minister's statement was a complete abdication of responsibility and of leadership. The vast majority of members of the Wet'suwet'en people support the Coastal Gas Link project. So I want to begin, uh, Chief Norton, with your reaction to all that was said in the House of Commons yesterday. Well, just going by what um, Mr. Shear says, uh, he, uh, without saying it, what he's talking about is uh, using the force of law. Uh, forced removal and whatever else comes with that. And that's been done before, that's been tried before, um, yet we still find ourselves in a situation where the courage, the courageous people are out there defending their rights, defending their land, defending their territory. And that's not going to change until Canada changes its approach. Um, we have to give, I guess, credit where credit is due. Uh, I guess the Prime Minister is using a very calm and not calm, not necessarily calm, but an approach where he's not, uh, he's not going to be inciting what has to happen, contrary to the comments he made when he was out of the country and was, uh, was, uh, was interviewed and talked about the rule of law and things of that nature. That's been toned down now, and that's the kind of language we need to hear. Uh, but that language also needs to lead to uh, actual, the type of action that's required in this situation. Um, and, and that is, uh, these, are, these are not ordinary times. These are not ordinary um, types of uh, demonstrations and things of that nature. It's been going on now for on or about 10 days. And the country, <clears throat> the country is feeling the, um, the economic effects and if we don't want that to continue, we don't want to, that to happen in the future, then, there, then the, the Canada has to change its way of dealing with um, the, uh, the disputes uh, that, have, uh, that have arisen over time, uh, over land, mm -hmm. uh, the return of lands and the, the, uh, the recognition of our of our rights on those territories. Let me jump in there, uh, Chief Norton, and I apologize because I do want to talk about uh, the way forward here, but I also, you raised the issue of Canadians that are now feeling the economic impact. And, and I do wonder, uh, you, you give credit to Prime Minister Trudeau for toning down his language. You, you, you take issue with what we heard from the Conservative leader. But what do you say to workers who have been temporary, temporarily laid off or to Canadians who must now consider paying more for food to eat or for propane to heat their homes? Well, I do feel some, uh, some, uh, a great deal of sympathy for people who, uh, who may be uh, feeling hardship or potentially will. But at the same time, I have to look at how much uh, over the last will say 200 years our people have suffered uh, from, uh, from, from being uh, prevented from earning a, a, a living, from uh, exercising the rights on their land. Uh, so this, I'll call it this short time period, is in no way compared to what we have suffered over the course of time. We, haven't, we don't need to go into all the details, but I think pretty much uh, people are pretty much aware of, uh, of, what, I'm, of what I'm talking about. Yes, there's, a, there's an immediate impact, and the governments, federally, federal government and provincial governments, need to act quickly, not in a, in a forceful way, but in a very peaceful manner, and uh, decide um, about the fairness of settlements with, uh, with, with indigenous people in this country. Mm -hmm. um, can't always be about, you know, 
the the pocketbook and this is this is also a, an issue not only for us it's for Canadians in general it's for North Americans in general in terms of uh, in terms of our, our the land that we all share together and the the environment the water the air and the uh, and the land you know I always say take care of the water the water will take care of you take mm -hmm. care of the air the air will take care of you take care of the land and the land will take care of you in practical that's not terms happening. well in practical terms then, and 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 perhaps this can be our closing point because uh, we're quickly running out of time but i do wonder because yesterday in, in the news conference you said this moment was an opportunity an opportunity for canadians to realize how governments have acted and the impact that has had on first nations so how in future, do we avoid a situation like we're seeing right now with these protests and the RCMP going into Wet'suwet'en territory? It's not only governments, it's also uh, industry. Multi, multi-billion dollar companies who, uh, who, are, who are making the money, who are exploiting uh, our territories. I mean, there's so many unsettled land across this country that Canada isn't really sovereign. As they as they describe it, because if they were, then you know this this is their territory. Then you know they don't need to to consult with us. They don't need to talk to us or anything like that. So people have to understand the um, the uh, the relationship uh, that uh, that has not evolved over time. So one sided, so unfair, and you know yes, we're uh, we're minority in terms of our numbers compared to. The millions of uh, Canadians that are here and those that are coming uh, after that will be here later on after uh, with all the immigration policies and all, policies and all of that so there there is a need for everyone to begin to understand you know and it, 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 it expands itself into the education system mm -hmm. what are they teaching young people now about Canada very little is being taught about the indigenous people. Grand Chief, I wish we had more time, but I thank you for the thoughts you've shared with Good us work. today. Thank you. And our thanks there to the Grand Chief Joseph Norton of the Mohawk Council of Ganawake.